Okay, so the Oilers won last night, giving them 63 points on the season, which means they have surpassed their total from last season. Now, I want to take a few minutes and talk about the Beatles. The Beatles, the four Beatles. Mm. Oh, from Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, we are from Liverpool. Liverpool. We used to play those dark clubs in Hamburg. I am a huge Beatles fan. As a matter of fact, my wife and I actually met because of the Beatles. He likes the Beatles. Yeah. Okay, my Lacey is obsessed with the Beatles. Really? Obsessed. You know, I wonder if maybe I could call him and see if, maybe see if he's seeing anybody. And if he's not, maybe he could meet Lacey. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how fun. Yeah. I've never, I don't usually do this. You know? No, I've never done this before either. Now, in June of 1967, the Beatles released Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, the number one album of all time according to Rolling Stone magazine. And the fourth track on that album is a little tune called Getting Better. It's getting better all the time. Now, this song, like many of the Beatles' best songs, was written by Lennon and McCartney. And this song in particular reflects the differences in the two individuals at that point in time. You have McCartney with his upbeat, positive outlook on life saying, hey, things are getting better. And then you have Lennon, who was struggling through a lot of personal issues at the time, saying, yeah, they couldn't get any worse. I think you know where I'm going with this because I have touched on this earlier in the season. There's two types of Oilers fans. Those who say, hey, look how much better things are. And those who say, well, they couldn't be any worse than they have been for the past five years. Well, you know where I stand on this. So I'm going to explain over the next couple of minutes how things are getting better and how the Oilers are basically right where I thought they'd be at this point in the season. First of all, the Oilers have nine games remaining, and if they win five of them, they will have their highest win total since before they drafted Taylor over Tyler. This isn't an unlikely scenario since five of their remaining games are against non-playoff teams. That might not seem like a big deal to some fans who are sick of losing and just want to see the Oilers make the jump right back into the playoffs. But as I said in a video I did last spring, whether fans like it or not, this is the first year of the Oilers' rebuild. Everything they were doing before was simply a comedy of errors. You need to build your foundation before making any real progress. And the Oilers have finally built that this season. Aside from a shaky 10-game stretch after the All-Star break, the Oilers have played consistently competitive hockey all year. Secondly, at the beginning of the season, I pegged the Oilers as an 80-point team, 85 max if everyone played lights out all year. But if you had told me at the beginning of the season that Clefbaum would miss over half the year, McDavid would miss 37 games, Nuge 24 games, Pouliot 18, and Eberle 13, I would have revised that prediction to 70 to 75 points. Now, I don't like to use injuries as an excuse, but there is no denying that they've factored into the Oilers' record. Just look at Montreal. They are the worst team in the league since Carey Price went down. Are they actually the worst team in the league? No. But that's how much key injuries can derail a team's season. And thirdly, and this is the one that really sticks out to me, the Oilers are finally developing some depth on defense. Despite using a whopping 14 defensemen this season, which is the most of any team in the league, the Oilers' defense has shown some real bright spots rather than completely imploding. The most recent one being the play of Jordan Osterley. In the eight games he's played this year, he has three assists, is plus one, and is averaging over 20 minutes a night. I said it earlier in the year, and I'll say it again. At this time next year, people will look at the Oilers' defense core as a strength, not a weakness. So that is my reasoning for why I believe the Oilers are right on track to break their 10-year playoff drought next season. I'd love to hear what you think of the Oilers' season so far. And hey, you might as well even tell me what your favorite Beatles song is. Leave your comments below, and I'll see you next week.